dream comes true. You could swim along the river, all the way to the sea. You could fly up in the sky, above the clouds and trees. You could plant a flower garden up on top of the moon. You could swing through the jungle all afternoon. Wherever our story takes us, I can't wait to see. Yes, friends, come and read with me. It's online story time. And welcome to Online Storytime at your Grand Rapids Area Library. I'm Miss Tracy, Teacher Missy, and we are so excited, so very excited, so over the moon excited that you're here with us today. Hey Teacher Missy, before we start talking about that slimy or wet or jumpy or runny thing we're going to talk about today. Don't forget furry. Or furry. Do you want to say? I think we should. Okay. Storytime friends, would you sing with us? Remember the song says, clap your hands, but you can clap whenever you got. Clap your knees, clap your elbows, clap your eyes, whatever. Here we go. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, clap your hands. If you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, if you want to hear a story, clap your hands. And I do want to hear a story. So, yeah. what are we going to talk about today? Well, you know, I spent many years in a classroom. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite parts of the classroom was having a pet. A pet in a your classroom? Pet. But do you know, Miss Tracy, that a, a pet can be anything? Okay, like what? Like a rock. Sure, I had a pet rock when I was um, little. I was that exciting. How about a fish? Oh, fish. Swim, 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 swim. Gotta remember to feed them. Yeah, that's that's important. Uh, let's see. Hamster. I should just picture him going around his little wheel. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we had one in one of my rooms, and then he broke out of his enclosure, <laughs> and <laughs> never to be seen again. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. So you could have, or you could grow something too, couldn't you? You could. You could have a class plant. <laughs> you sure could. Do you want to hear a funny story about a pet that visited a school? And yeah. this is a true story. I worked at a school once where one of the students had a snake and they wanted to bring the snake to school. And the teacher said, that was fine. You can bring the snake to school for the afternoon. And so his mom dropped him off with the snake and, and the, all the kids were ooing and aahing about the snake. And then, um, they all went to recess, and they came back, and the snake was gone. <laughs> and it was six months before that snake. That, that snake ended up crawling, they think, through the pipes and into the, by, by the furnace to keep warm, because it was winter. And um, six months later, the preschoolers who were downstairs from this classroom were sitting in their school, and one of them pointed out to the teacher that, there was a snake coming through the ceiling. <laughs> and so all the preschoolers left and the student came and got their snake and they all lived happily ever after. Her teacher was taken away on a stretcher. That's right, that's right. <laughs> but that snake lived in the walls for six months. And you know, that's interesting because they don't have to eat regularly like right. we do. They can go a long time without food, and apparently. They, right, they need water though, but I'm sure right. it found some Fall sort water. of water some in the walls. walls. Mouse or something yeah. here or there. Who knows? That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my favorite almost class pet story. Almost it was a class. visiting pet. Yeah. It wasn't a class pet. <laughs> yeah. And then that teacher said the rule after that was no, I'm sorry, you can't bring your snakes to visit us yeah. in school anymore. <laughs> so, hey, do you have any good stories about class pets? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got stories, all right. Miss Tracy, look what I got for us today. Oh, is that like a hamster or a gerbil? You know, I'm not exactly sure because they look quite a bit alike. They look very much like a mouse. Hmm, hamster, gerbil. Maybe it's a mouse. Who knows? It's short-haired. I think it's probably a hamster. Okay. I think gerbils tend to be a little furrier, don't okay. they? Anybody know? I'm not sure. So cute, though. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got a kind of a funny name. IQ. 
<laughs> IQ goes to the library. And this book was written and illustrated by Marianne Frazier, and it comes to us from Walker and Company Publishing. IQ goes, I wonder what he's gonna do at the library, Miss Tracy. Is he gonna be here with us? Monday. On Monday, our teacher, Mrs. Ferber said, students, this is library week. Every day this week, our class will be going to the library. I wanna be in that class. IQ had never been to the library. He didn't wanna stay behind in the classroom, so he wanted to go with the other students. Well, he might be their pet. Mrs. Binder, the librarian, welcomed the class. Today is reading corner day, she said. Come, come have a seat by the big chair and I will read a book to you. Well, this looks familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> the story made IQ laugh until his eyes watered and his tail curled. He wanted to take that book back to the classroom with him. Mrs. Binder said the books had to be checked out for the class. If you complete a permission slip, I will give you a library card. Then you can check out a book. Oh, IQ wanted to check out that funny book. Mrs. Binder had just read it, but the book was already shelved. What does that mean, Miss Tracy? It's been it, shelved. A book that is shelved has been put back in its own special spot. Okay. The library was such a large place. IQ was glad he still had four days to, to find the funny book. Hmm. Tuesday. On Tuesday, IQ came ready to explore the library. There were rows and rows of videos, CDs, DVDs, audio cassettes, magazines, puppets, and newspapers. And there were so many books. Some books had hard covers and some had paper covers. Some were easy readers and others had long chapters and small print. There were books on shelves and books on racks that spun. Look, he's going Whoa. for a little ride on the bookshelf. <laughs> Today is Puppet Day, announced <clears throat> Miss Binder. Who would like to help me with the puppets? Oh, IQ raised his paw first. <laughs> the puppet fit perfectly as Mrs. Binder read the book. IQ acted it out. When the story was over, it was time to go back to the classroom. I counted, IQ counted on his paw. Only three days left to find the book. And look at his outfit. <laughs> You know, Miss Tracy, if you look at that outfit, uh -huh. what's he dressed up as? He's dressed up as a pig. And what do you see that he's holding? I see that he's holding a brick and a trowel. I and wonder. I think maybe he's the third little pig. I think so too, because he was going to build, build his house of bricks. Some of you might know that already. Wednesday. On Wednesday, IQ went to the book area marked nonfiction. Oh, he was amazed at all the different topics. In the biography section, IQ found a book on famous rodents. It looked interesting, but he thought the book Miss Binder had read on the first day was much funnier. He decided to keep looking for it. Could everyone come over to the audio table, asked Mrs. Binder. This is books on tape day. IQ liked the earphones. They were very comfortable. Soon the story was over and IQ realized it was time to go. He was getting worried. There were only two days left to find that funny book. Thursday. On Thursday, IQ discovered a section of books marked fiction. He realized the books, <clears throat> the books all had stories invented by the author. Some had drawings, some had photographs, and some had only words. IQ liked the picture book the best. They made him feel big. <laughs> when he was done with the book, he was careful to put it back exactly where he found it. 
Miss Tracy, look at that. So we have a cart like that here. We have about 15 carts like that. Wow, yeah. 15, that's a lot. And we also have other carts too, some that are smaller, so you can do you know, fewer books on a cart. Right, and you use those to put the books, take the books out and put them back? We use them to move books around every single day. That is so cool. Mrs. Binder gathered all the students at a table. Today is bookmark day. Bookmarks help you mark the place in your book that you are reading without ruining it. You can each make one. And look at they're at the table doing all kinds of fun stuff. They got glue and scissors and yeah, I think those are gonna be pretty cool. IQ had problems making his bookmark. By the time he had unstuck his tail, Mrs. Ferber had come to fetch the class. Most of the other students had already checked out a book. IQ had only one day left to find his book and to get a library card. He got it. He got his tail stuck in the glue trying to make his bookmark. <laughs> on Friday, Friday, on Friday when the class came to the library, Mrs. Binder said, today, today is computer day. It is our last day of the library week. Mrs. Binder showed the students how to use the computer to find a book. When she was done, IQ scrambled down to try. IQ pushed the mouse until it was where he wanted it. That's this kind of mouse. That's a different kind of mouse, That's isn't right. it? Then he jumped on the mouse and made it click. Then he danced on the keys to type in the title of the book he wanted. Finally, all the information he needed was on the screen. He wrote it down and he hurried over to the shelf. At last, IQ had found that funny book. The tricky part was getting the book onto Mrs. Binder's desk. Look at, it's way up there on the top of that stool. What is he going to do? Carefully, he filled out the permission slip for the library card, but there on the bottom was a line that said, parent slash guardian signature. Hmm. IQ did not know what to do. Just then the bell rang and Mrs. Ferber came to get her class. Oh my, IQ felt terrible. He was the only student without a book or a library card. Excuse me, whoops, sorry. Excuse me, Mrs. Ferber, said Mrs. Binder. I have a book with an incomplete permission slip. Mrs. Ferber looked at the name on the permission slip. Since I take care of him, I guess, I guess I am his guardian. So I can sign that, she said. Oh, IQ beamed from whisker to whisker. As Mrs. Binder made him a library card, he wrote his name on it very, very neatly so that everyone would know it was his. Look at how careful he's being with all two letters. This picture. Look at him, he's carrying his book out. Look, Miss Tracy. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. IQ, you or something. Saturday. On Saturday, IQ was all alone in the classroom, but for once, he didn't mind. He read his book over and over, laughing and t until his eyes watered and <laughs> his tail curled. He was just laughing away. That must be a pretty good book. Sunday. On Sunday, he imagined all of the other things that he would check out with his new library card. And he's looking, he's thinking about a vid, there's a videotape there and a, a little cassette. Oh, and there's the one where he did the puppets. They did that little puppet day. And famous rodents. <laughs> famous rodents. That's the one I want to see. Well, I think IQ had a great day and a great week at the library. Hey, story time friends. Teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. Are you guys ready for 
flannel board. Oh yeah, it's flannel time. You ready? I am so ready because I love to do flannel time with you. Are you ready? Okay, we have a tough job ahead of us because we have to pick the best class pet. And the song we're going to sing is called Looking for a Class Pet. Okay, and here we go. Oh, we're looking for the best class pet. Oh, we're looking for the best class pet. It shouldn't call, it shouldn't roar, or run across the floor. Oh, we're looking for the best class pet. Aiden thinks a frog will do. It will hop around between me and you. We'll have to take care so we don't step right there. Maybe a frog just won't do. Okay, maybe maybe not a frog because you might not. step on him. Okay, here we go. <gasps> Marty thinks a giraffe we'd adore. It would be handy for some chores. It could reach the high shelves that we can't get ourselves. If only it would fit through the doors. <laughs> uh, that's not going to work, is it, friends? No, nope, not a giraffe. I know. Mamie thinks a pelican would be fine. It could use its beak to really shine. It could scoop up the books and return them to their nook. Except they'd be covered in slime. Ugh. Maybe we don't want books out of a pelican's beak. Here we go. George says a chicken is their wish. It could eat all its food from a dish. It might mock, it might beg, it might even lay an egg. Maybe we should stick to a fish. Here we go. So what do you think, story time friends? What do you think would make the best class pet? I know the giraffe would be fun. Yep, yep, the pet, uh-huh, yep. You're right, I think we'll stick to the fish. Thanks for playing. Hey, Miss Tracy, check this out. Well, that doesn't say class pet, that says class plant. Class plant? Do you suppose that the plant is the pet? Let's find out. World's best class plant, it tells me. Um, written by Liz Garten Scanlon and Audrey Vernick. They did this book together and it was illustrated by Lenore Bontiago. So lots of people worked hard on this book, three people. And it comes to us from, I just said it now, G.P. Putnam and Sons. World's best class plant. Let's find out about this one. Room 107 has a cockatiel. Room 108 has a chinchilla. Even the art room has a bearded dragon. Oh, that would be a cool wow. pet. But room 108, Arlo's classroom, there's a plant. Mostly green, hardly growing, never moving plant. Instead of doing fun class pit stuff, shredding the newspaper bedding, filling the food bowl, cradling the creature carefully and passing it around for morning circle, Arlo's class took turns watering <laughs> but sometimes they forget because it doesn't squeak or or whistle or whimper it's just a plant <laughs> mr <laughs> mr boring not his real name <laughs> says the plant is more than enough excitement for us Arlo thinks Mr. Boring doesn't know what the word excitement means, 
because this plant is about as exciting as, as a thumbtack or cornflakes or the sidewalk. Arlo wishes it was exciting. He wishes room 109 had a silly but trusting companion instead of a blob in a plastic pot on a windowsill. He wishes for someone to hold and whisper secrets to and love. One morning, Arlo raised his hand and announces, we should name our plant. Yes, vicious vine noodle, said Miriam. <laughs> Francisco the fourth, said Sylvia. Who oh, the green blobster. Otis barely gets his suggestion out before Mr. Bummer, not, not his real name, says, what about Jerry? Arlo opens his mouth to protest, but when he looks at the plant, he realizes Ms. Mr. Bummer is right. The plant is Jerry. Everyone agrees. Mr. Something about naming the blob made it more exciting. All of room 109 rushed over to sing Jerry's praises and add jobs to the chore chart. Bring Jerry home for the weekend. Sweep up the dropped leaves. Turn Jerry toward the sunlight. As the days passed, Strange things happen. Greener and greener and twistier. In fact, Jerry gets so green and long and twisty that he outgrows his plastic pot. Kids come to school bursting with the stuff that they've learned. Like it's, it turns out that Jerry is a spider plant. And if you water him too much, you can kill him. And this, this is unbelievable. Jerry makes little baby Jerry's. They're called spiderettes. You can cut them off and turn into and turn them into a whole new plant. Oh, don't try that with a cockatiel or a chinchilla. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> One morning, when it's Arlo's job to do the misting, he's pretty sure he hears Jerry breathe. No. Not breathe, more like whisper. I know, Jerry, Arlo whispers back. Everybody likes feeling special. When room 109 asks if they can have a, a Jerry appreciation day, Mr. Patient, uh, not his real name, says, yes, talk about exciting. The pl they plan leafy costumes, green snacks, and watering can races. <laughs> <laughs> Word spreads, of course. The kids from 107 came to trade their cockatiel for Jerry. <laughs> no way. Room 108 wants their chinchilla to meet Jerry. Well, what if the chinchilla eats Jerry? <laughs> no way. Everyone wants to come to Jerry Appreciation Day. Everyone should get to know Jerry, said Mia, with his fine green leaves and surprising twists, said Sylvie and LaVar. And just his, Arlo reaches his arms out wide. There, there are no words to express the greatness of Jerry. So, Jerry Appreciation Day goes school wide. Check this out. Miss Tracy, look at this. Wow. They've got practically a festival going for Jerry. For Jerry. Jerry deserves it though. Jerry's amazing. Well, it's glorious and spectacular and joyous. But wow, the kids in room 109 are oh, whooped by the end. Jerry really is as much excitement as they can handle. They're relieved when everyone goes back to their classroom. They have Jerry, then they will have Jerry to themselves again. I think they're all kind of tired from all that 
festivity. For the rest of the year, the mist, they mist and fluff and turn and love their classmate. So when they say they missed him, what, I wonder what that means. I think to mist is to spray him lightly with water. So you don't water them the same way, apparently, yeah. as other ones. And you can see them all taking turns, misting and turning the plant and even hugging the plant. Teacher Missy, why would you have to turn a plant? Because they need a lot of sunlight. And if you're in a window, where they don't get real direct sunlight, if you turn the plant, it'll move toward the sunlight. And they do need a lot of sunlight. That's one of their prerequisites. Although there are plants that don't need a lot of sunlight. Hmm. But apparently a spider plant isn't one of them. They must need lots of sun. Then on the last day of school, when it was time to say goodbye to Jerry, Mr. Perfect, that should be his real name, you each get to bring home a baby cherry of your own. Oh my gosh, how cool is that? And look at his teacher wrote on the board, have a great summer. Do you suppose he's excited that he gets to take that home? When Arlo's next year teacher, Mr. No Nonsense, not his real name, not her real name, I'm sorry, offers up a rock as the class pet. Arlo remembers how Jerry used to be mostly green, hardly growing, and never moving plant before Mr. Smart, actually his real name, let them name him. We talked about that a pet rock could be a possibility. So Arlo picks up the rock and he examines it closely. He turns it over and feels the weight of it in his hand. He really gets to know it before whispering quietly, Brenda, is that you? <laughs> I love it, Brenda, is that you? <laughs> so see, you can even have a rock for a pet. Named Brenda. Brenda. Okay, story time friends. Teacher Missy. Yes, ma'am. Are you ready to wave a scarf? I am. <laughs> okay. So out of your story time kits, my friend, I'd like you to find a scarf. And if you're local to us, we still have some story time kits. You can just come on down to the library and say, I'd like my story time kit, please. And we'll hand it to you and you can keep it forever and ever. And in it, of course, you will find a scarf. Now we're gonna give teacher Missy her green scarf. Oh, and my I, favorite. Yeah, it is. And it is. I am going to use my red. Did you hear something? Did you miss it? Yeah, you I did. I did hear, oh. I hear a little something, but I don't know what it is. Oh. Oh, of course. Did you miss it? Who's it? Is somebody here? Zebra oh. would like to be our story time friend today. Hello, Teacher Missy. Good morning, Zebra. Hello, Storytime friends. I am simply delighted to be in your presence. That means Zebra's happy to be with you. Zebra sometimes likes to use big words, and I like to hear big words. I know. Because then you learn something you never knew. Okay, so you have your scarf. Remember, if you don't have a scarf, you can wave a sock. You can wave a Kleenex. You can wave a paper towel. You can wave anything you have. Here we go, and we're gonna do a warm up that we haven't done in a while called We Wave Our Scarves Together. We wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, because it's fun to do. Oh, wave them up high, oh, wave them down low, wave them in the middle, because it's fun to do. We throw our scarves together. We throw our scarves together. We throw our scarves together. Because it's fun to do. Throw them up high. 
throw them down low, throw them in the middle, because it's fun to do. We, one more time, here we go. Spin our scarves together, we spin our scarves together, we spin our scarves together, because it's fun to do. Spin them up high, spin them down low, spin them in the middle, because it's fun to do. Oh, that was so much fun. That was quite fun. All right. Now we are going to do a song called Class Pets. And your scarf is going to do the actions of the class pets. And it starts out with the hamster. What do you suppose a hamster does? Yeah, they run around their wheel. Here we go. The hamster in the cage runs around their wheel, around their wheel, around their wheel. The hamster in the cage runs around their wheel all day long. Now what are you supposed to frog does? The frog in the tank hops up and down, up and down, up and down. The frog in the tank hops up and down all day long. Now, what about if you had a snake? Can you make your scarf slither? Here we go. The snake in the crate slithers to and fro, to and fro, to and fro. The snake in the crate slithers to and fro all day long. Now, what do the kids do? They're gonna feed their pets. Are you ready? So we're gonna give them some food. Can you throw some food into your pet's cage? Here we go. The kids in the class, they feed their pets, feed their pets, feed their pets. The kids in the class, they feed their pets all day long. But maybe you shouldn't feed them all day long. Okay. Might be getting kind of full. And what do we do at the end of the day? It's time for the kids to say goodbye, say goodbye, say goodbye. It's time for the kids to say goodbye. See you tomorrow. Oh, that was a long day feeding all of those pets. It was. Maybe you shouldn't have all those pets in your room. Maybe just one. Maybe just one. Hey, thanks for playing. Hey, story time friends. Teacher Missy, I had such a fun day today. I know, wasn't this just so much fun? We learned that maybe a giraffe was not the best class pet, nor a pelican, because you know, slimy books and all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we saw that IQ finally got a library card and the funny book they were looking for. He looked for that book for a week. Oh my gosh, and that was so fun when he finally got to read it on the weekend. It was. And <clears throat> Jerry, a class plant. I thought it was an excellent thing to do, to have a class plant. And then maybe the next year, Brenda, the class rock. Right, Brenda, I, I like that one. Brenda. Yeah. I like it too. But now I'm afraid it's time to say goodbye. Would you sing with us? All right, here we go. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Yes, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Sorry, time is done today. Now it's time to go and play. Oh, it's time to say goodbye to all our friends. Goodbye, everybody. Have fun finding a pet for your class. <laughs>